Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got a medical display, and or at least that's what I'd like to think of it. It's really just an RCA TV, but it is technically a medical display because this particular model runs off 12 volts DC. So there is no 120 volt AC input on this display whatsoever. The reason that they run it off the lower voltage DC is because it's much safer to run the cabling up through booms. And I do believe that this is the kind of display that sits down um, near the patient. So uh, the initial complaint was that the unit does not power on. Um, I found a couple things that were a little suspect. Uh, you can see I've got the panel outside of its chassis. I've got the chassis sitting right here. And this also has an integrated uh, DVD player, which none of that is necessary for testing the symptom that it's not powering on. So you can see I unplugged all the accessories from the, the main bar, power board. And um, the only thing I really need is this little daughter board right here, which uh, runs your remote signal on, which is also the power button. So I need this board. Um, you can see I've got other cables that do not necessarily connect. So the symptom is that the unit was not powering on. Uh, black display. So the first thing I noticed is right on the back there was a ribbon connector right here, or a flat blade connector is probably more accurate, and um, it was a little canted in its socket. So one of the first things I did is I inspected the socket, and then I placed it back up in the proper orientation, and then I secured the cable with hot glue, which is actually pretty similar to what a lot of Chinese companies are doing anyway with electronics. Hot glue is an insulator, and it does add for a functional support so that's good um, so now I know my cable is good um, there is a main fuse right here so just like I always tell people whenever power comes in or goes out of a board there's always a fuse and you can see I've got one right here it does test good and that's obviously the first thing you check but um, I think it's ready to power up so one of the first things I do is I get a, a 12 volt power supply and <clears throat> this one is three and a half amps. So this one should be plenty enough power. I do have uh, some garbage power supplies floating around because you never know when you can use them for testing and stuff like this. Three and a half amps is plenty. Uh, so one of the first things I do is check the polarity of the DC power supply just to make sure that not only do I have voltage to make sure that I've got it in the correct polarity. Okay, so this one right here is positive. So for the positive, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip it straight onto the fuse. And I'm gonna clip it on the um, one side of the fuse. So in case it does pop, it's gonna pop that fuse. So we're safe. All right, and I'm going to connect the negative side right here. I'm going to twist these two together. Now, mind you, I am testing this in my shop, and this isn't a major thing since it's just a uh, TV. It's uh, basically an RV TV, if you want to think about it. Um, RVs, uh, conversion vans and stuff, they all run off 12 volt. So if you ever need to replace one of these TVs, that's where I would look as RV and van TVs. And for negative, on this one here, I've already checked for um, commonality between the negative post on the DC jack and pretty much any of the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here and connect it on the USB outer shroud. So I'm running through the fuse and I'm, I've got a common ground through the USB shroud. So let's go ahead and test it right now. There we go, we got our 12 volts. Okay, so I've got my 12 volts. Here, let me untangle this mess. Normally my workbench is a wee bit more organized, but I figured, let me go ahead and show you guys this process real quick while I'm here. All right, and let me connect this guy back on the USB. Oop, wow, it's not really sticking on there, is it? There we go. All right, and let's go ahead and test it out. Hey, 
Hey! <laughs> All right. Look at that. Oh, you guys, look at that. Look at that. Okay. So I've got a clear picture. Um, my backlight is working all the way around and it's got a no signal, which means that it is talking to your display uh, controller. So uh, I would like to think that this guy is functioning perfectly well. I think all I gotta do now is throw a signal on it and check it out. So this here is just one of those things I got to tell you guys. Um, I don't know the original symptom because I didn't see it plugged in at the location. There's a lot of things that could take into account why it wasn't powering up on site. But I do know that I did a physical inspection. I did see that that blade connector on the back of the display, it wasn't seated completely correctly. It could be the problem. But um, more than likely what they were experiencing is a problem with the power supply. The weak link on almost every single medical device is going to be your DC power supply. And that's because it's designed to be the weak link. Remember guys, just because you have voltage does not mean necessarily that you have current. So once you go to boot up a TV or something like this, it starts pulling that voltage and if your um, DC power supply can't keep up, it it drops below the threshold and it will not allow it to power on. So um, I can't verify that, but what I can say is that this device currently is ready to be tested. Now, what you can do is if, if you don't have a multimeter to test out your DC power supply, you, you can always move the TV to a neighboring patient room and try and plug it in and see if it powers up. Always use um, local resources if possible to help you troubleshoot but the blade connector probably was maybe part at fault but as far as I can tell this guy here looks like it's ready to power up so guys that just goes to show you if you don't have a regulated DC power supply like a benchtop power supply which is obviously the best way to test this kind of thing I use my surplus bricks and I always have surplus bricks uh, especially at their higher amperage like this is three and a half amps the only downside to this is I can't adjust the current adjusting the current is critical in case there is a dead short the DC power supply will trip this guy here it does have probably some sort of short circuit detection but it's still not as good as a regular DC power supply where I can read out how much current is being pulled and that usually helps me diagnose shorts. So, guys, if you have these power brakes, these AC-DC adapters, keep some on hand. Wind the cord up nice and neat and keep them on hand because the day comes when you might need a very special power supply to repair a device or to test out a device and get it back up and going. Thanks for watching, guys.